In the age of the internet, fixed pricing is a thing of the past. We are looking at literally hundreds of billions of price observations. Hi, I'm Bruno Ziza, and today we're here with Oren at the University of Washington. Thank you very much for your time, Oren. We're here to talk about prediction. Now, throughout the interview, I'm going to be looking at my phone, not because I'm looking at my time, but because I'm looking at my notes. Now, a lot of people know about your background. You're today the CTO of Decide.com, which is a company we're going to talk about. What I want to do is start with the original problem you helped us with, which was travel. And we have a great section on that uh, with an interview uh, from The Economist where they cover your work on Faircast. Can you tell us what Faircast was and how you came about the, uh, the, the concept? Sure, Bruno. So I like to tie the themes that I work on, big data, data mining, text, with problems that people have. And there's no problem that I like better than a personal problem that I've had and I have a chance to solve it. So Faircast actually started on an airplane on the way to my brother's wedding where I asked people around me how much they paid for their seats. Turned out that they paid uh, less than I did and they bought later. So at this point I was pissed off, frankly. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, don't get mad, get even. Uh, and I set out to find uh, algorithms and data that will allow me to figure out when's the best time uh, to buy my ticket. And this started out as research at the University of Washington, where I'm a professor and where we are uh, right now, but uh, very rapidly became a, a company initially called Hamlet, to buy or not to buy, that is the question. And then Faircast, and ultimately uh, bought by Microsoft, and it's now part of Bing Travel. So originally the technology of Faircast was started in 2003, bought by Microsoft 2008. You can take a test drive at bing.com forward slash travel. Tell me, how do people use it, and, and maybe how many people have used it since you started with the application? So the, the, the basic use is if you've identified uh, somewhere you want to go and you're wondering, is now the right time to buy the ticket? Uh, you go to faircast.com and you get a prediction where it tells you whether prices are likely to go up or not, or to go down, and you get a recommendation uh, a, a, about that. Uh, this is very fluid. In the age of the internet, fixed pricing is a thing of the past, and so um, uh, the prices are constantly changing. Uh, you can go get a recommendation. You can get transparent information about uh, how likely are the prices to go up, how likely they are to go down, and based on that, you can make uh, decisions. Faircast's motto was, know when to buy. So what's going on in the background when you do that? How, how are you able to predict, and maybe that's your secret sauce and you're not going to want to tell me, but how much is required to mine to predict where the prices are going to go? So we are looking at literally hundreds of billions of price observations gathered now, as you said, over the period of uh, seven years, eight years or more. So different uh, Christmas shopping season, Thanksgiving, uh, local travel, international travel, a huge amount of data that's crunched to find patterns uh, in the data. And those are both uh, short-term patterns, like is Tuesday a better day to buy than Monday, as well as uh, seasonal patterns, right? What happens around uh, Thanksgiving? We put all that together to help uh, consumers make a good decision. Now, I find that the issue with prediction is not something uh, about how much data you need in order to predict the future and, and the, the, the trick with how much history actually does have an impact on the past. Sometimes is what happens when your prediction is flat out wrong? You have people complain, or what do you, how do you deal with that? So it's definitely the case that the prediction is sometimes wrong, although living in Seattle, I like to say our predictions are better than uh, the weatherman's predictions of the, of the weather here in Seattle. <laughs> and we actually, as Faircast, we had our predictions audited by an external firm, and we found that we were getting 75 to 80 uh, percent accuracy. But the key here is transparency. So we constantly monitoring the predictive accuracy, and we tell you when uh, uh, we're right or wrong, what's the likelihood that we're gonna get it right, what's our confidence, and so you can factor that into making your decision. And those kinds of principles are actually the ones that we transferred to uh, Decide.com, where we're doing very similar things, telling you when's the right time to buy your consumer electronics. And that's what I wanna talk about here, and, and hopefully if you're a CIO here, you can see the, the complexity that's involved with predicting right, now, this principle we've taken to electronics, which is what Decide.com is, is when do you need to buy or when, what's the best time for you to buy a piece of electronic? 
But there's something even more complex that you do in this site.com because beyond just monitoring history, you're also monitoring rumors and, and things that could be indication of what might happen. Can you take us through what you do there? Sure. So our motto at decide.com is no regrets. And so why would you ever regret buying an electronic device? There's actually two reasons. One is you got it at the wrong price, and that stings a little bit. Maybe you lost 100 bucks. It's not the end of the world. What's even worse is if you bought the wrong device. So think about in the 30 or 45 days before the iPad 2 came out, how many people, how many millions of people bought an iPad 1? How many people bought uh, the wrong camera only to find out that there's a new version just down the road? So we use our historical data, we use rumors and text, blogs, uh, PR announcements. We use all that information to not only find the right price, but also uh, tell you, predict when the next model is coming. And that's, that's very valuable for people as well. And so let's go back to this idea of text, because I know you have an opinion on that. You recently published a piece that was covered in the New York Times, which is this whole idea of how we think about searching through text and how text mining or text searching helps us lead uh, better results. Tell us a little bit about your, your idea there. Sure, well, we, we all are inundated with text, whether it's uh, tweets and Facebook updates or whether it's inside the corporation, you know, endless memos, uh, whether it's uh, the news media, it's an enormous amount of text and most people just can't possibly keep up with it. Well, again, technology to the rescue, we've developed information extraction and text mining technology that traverses these enormous amounts of text for you and extracts the key nuggets that you would be interested in. So in the case of uh, consumer electronics products with Decide.com, it'll give you the latest and best rumors and, and news and blog posts that are associated with particular products or with product cameras. I'm interested in Sony cameras. What's the latest and greatest uh, on that? But we're even taking that further, and this is research here at the University of Washington, we're looking at the question, how can you possibly do search? And particularly when more and more of our information access comes through devices like this, or your uh, and beautiful Windows, Windows phone. Windows phone, yes. right. The point is, in all phones, right, uh, the screen is tiny, the um, keyboard is awkward or even non-existent. So how can we possibly find what we need, right? Uh, 10 blue links just isn't gonna cut it anymore. And the kind of interaction that we're developing here is uh, people asking questions rather than just typing in keywords and then getting straightforward, simple answers directly extracted from the text. I want a good sushi restaurant near here that where people particularly reviewed uh, well the fresh fish, but also the sushi bar. Well, I don't have time to read all these reviews on Yelp or whatever. Let the technology do that for me and extract the key nuggets for me to, to look at very quickly on the phone or even not look at it. I'm driving. I can't look at the screen at all. I can have the answer read to me. And that's the future of search. Well, Oren, thank you for sharing these insights with us. This is giving us a lot to think through. And many of the CIOs here are thinking about complexity, just like what we said, historical information, structured and structured data, and also the types of device you're, you have to handle or interacting with in order to get your results. Now, also know that you are very influential in the startup world and, and you help entrepreneurs think about the lessons that they, uh, that they learn through the startups. I think you have a joke saying that the best way to learn uh, on the second startup is to go straight to the second startup instead of just doing the mistakes of the first one. What did you learn in the second startup, Decide.com, uh, that you didn't learn at Faircast? Well, p people definitely uh, ask me that question. What's your advice for uh, starting, starting a new company? And my suggestion is always go straight to the second startup or the third one yeah. so you can... Uh, uh, avoid the mistakes of the first one. Exactly, <laughs> avoid, avoid those mistakes. Uh, at uh, Decide.com, I think the key thing that, that we learned is that there's a, a set of problems around online shopping, that uh, it's uh, e-commerce is growing at tremendous speed, but uh, uh, people are not getting the kind of hand-holding they used to get a Magnolia Hi-Fi. And so we realized that we need to put together multiple signals. There's the price signal, there's the text signal from news and rumors, there's technical specifications. And to solve this problem well, we really need to put all those pieces uh, together to create a unique experience. Uh, a second thing that we've learned is so much is happening on uh, the mobile device. And so uh, we immediately coded everything in HTML5, make it easily accessible from any mobile device, and we're launching apps on all the, the mobile phones as well. Excellent, thank you for your insights again. You can go and find out more at thisside.com. Until next time, I'm Bruno Aziza.